are the Nagat. Ethiopians have had very intimate relations with Indians. In fact the Ethiopians ruled much of India. These Ethiopians were called Naga. It was the Naga who created Sanskrit. The original Naga people came from modern Ethiopia. They belong to the Irwi Kingdom. The so-called Mongoloid Naga people are not the original Naga people of SE Asia and India. Most people today believe the Naga people were Mongoloids. Today the term Naga people refers to a conglomeration of several tribes inhabiting the northeastern part of India and northwestern Burma. R. R. Shimre in his Origin and Culture of the Nagas, 1985, said that the term Naga for this Mongoloid population was derived from the Burmese word Naka meaning pierced heirs, not Nagat. In other words the contemporary Naga are really, Naka. The Mongoloids are fake. In Indian tradition the Naga won central India from the Vilavar, Bauman, and Manavar, fishermen. The Naga were great seamen who ruled much of India, Sri Lanka, and Burma. The great Naga kings of India and Southeast Asia came from ancient Ethiopia which was called Malaha by the Sumerians, and Punt by the Egyptians. The Kebra Nagast, is a history of the kings of modern Ethiopia. In the Kebra Nagast, we find mention of the Irwi kings who ruled India. Mention of the Naga is also found in ancient Indian literature, namely the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. The earliest mention of the Naga, appear in the Ramayana, they are also mentioned in the Mahabharata. In the Mahabharata we discover that the Naga had a capital city in the Deccan, and other cities spread between the Jumna and Ganges rivers as early as 1300 BC. The Dravidian classic, the Silapatakaram made it clear that the first great kingdom of India was Naganadu. A reading of ancient Dravidian literature which dates back to 500 BC, gives us considerable information on the Naga. In Indian tradition the Naga won central India from the Vilavar, Bauman, and Manavar, fishermen. The Naga were great seamen who ruled much of India, Sri Lanka, and Burma. To the Aryans they were described as half-man and snake. The Tamil knew them as warlike people who used the bow and noose. The Naga came from Kushpunt slash Ethiopia. The Puntites were the greatest sailors of the ancient world. In the Egyptian inscriptions there is mention of the Puntite ports of Outkilat, Hamsu, and Tekaru, which corresponds to Atulis, Hamasan and Tigray. In Sumerian text, it is claimed that the Puntites traded with the people of the Indus Valley or Dilmun. According to S. N. Kramer in the Sumerians, part of Punt was probably called Malaha, and Dilmun was probably the ancient name of the Indus Valley. Today some scholars maintain that Oman, where we find no ancient cities was Dilmun and the Indus Valley may have been Malaha. Ancient Ethiopian traditions support the rule of Puntites or Ethiopians of India. In the Kebra Nagast, we find mention of the Irwi kings who ruled India. The founder of the dynasty was Siabasi Angabo. This dynasty according to the Kebra Nagast began around 1370 BC. These rulers of India and Ethiopia were called Nagas. The Kebra Nagast claims that Queen Makeda had servants and merchants, they traded for her at sea and on land in the Indies and Aswan. It also says that her son Ebna Hakim or Manalikai, made a campaign in the Indian Sea, the King of India made gifts and donations and prostrate himself before him. It is also said that Manalik ruled an empire that extended from the rivers of Egypt, Blue Nile, to the west and from the south Shoa to eastern India, according to the Kebra Nagast. The Kebra Nagast identification of an eastern Indian emperor ruled by the Naga, corresponds to the Naga colonies in the Deccan, and on the east coast between the Kavirai and Vagai rivers. The presence of Malahate slash Puntites in India may explain the Greek tradition of Kusits ruling India up to the Ganges. It would also explain the Aryan traditions of Malachas, Sanskrit name for some of the non-Aryan people, as one of the aboriginal groups of India. Many scholars associate the name Lechchas with Malaha. The major Naga tribes were the Maravar, Ayanar, Oliar, Oviyar, Aruvalar, and Parathavar. The Nagas resisted the invention of the Cholas. In the Kalitokai 4,1-5, 
the Naga are described as being of strong limbs and hardy frames and fierce looking tigers wearing long and curled locks of hair. The Naga kings of Sri Lanka are mentioned in the Mahawanso and are said to have later become Dravidians, as testified to by the names of these people, Naganathan, Nagaratnam, Nagraja, and etc. The Naga or Ethiopians were defeated by Dravidian-speaking people from Kumari Nadu. Kumari Nadu is supposed to have formerly existed as a large island in the India Ocean which connected India with East Africa. This land mass is mentioned in the Silapata Karam, which said that Kamuri Nadu was made up of seven Nadus or regions. The Dravidian scholars Ada Yarkunalar and Nachinar wrote about the ancient principalities of Tamilaham, which existed on Kamuri Nadu. Kamuri Nadu was ruled by the Pandyan slash Pandyans at Madurai before it sunk beneath the sea. The greatest king of Kumari Nadu was Sengun. According to Dravidian scholars the Pandyans worshipped the goddess Kumari Amon. This Amon, probably corresponds to the ancient god Amon of the Kushites. The Kailitokai 104, makes it clear that after the Pandyans were forced to migrate off their island home into South India, to compensate for the area lost to the great waves of the sea, King Pandya without tiresome moved to the other countries and won them. Removing the emblems of Tiger, Cholas, and Bao, Cheras, he, in their place inscribed his reputed emblem fish, Pandyas, and valiantly made his enemies bow to him. The Funan civilization in Southeast Asia was founded by the Nagas. The Nagas in Southeast Asia were also called the Khmer. There were also Puntite speakers in Southeast Asia. These Puntite speakers came from Ethiopia. They were related to the people who founded the Irwi and Habesh Aksum empires. These Puntites, are usually referred to as the Naga or Sea Kings. The Khmer Kingdom, Funan, and Cochin China were all once ruled by blacks. Predominantly Naga, and Dravidians tribes. As in India the culture bearers of Funan were mainly Naga, a representative of local native royalty of Funan. The first Naga ruler in Southeast Asia was an engineer. Tradition has it that the Naga, drank the flood waters and enabled the people to cultivate the fields. This tradition refers to the numerous ancient canals built in Funan by expert engineers. These dams and canals were designed to control the Mekong Delta floods, while irrigating large rice paddies without endangering the crops which were probably developed by the Nagas. The chief sites of Funan, Oceo, and Nisam, all had houses and buildings built on piles. The people here as in the Kushina areas of Central Asia and Jiang, wrote in Sanskrit. The Naga invented the Sanskrit writing system. The Naga, who early ruled Kambay, may have been responsible for the spread of Indian carnelian beads to Southeast Asia as early as 1000 BC. This Naga brings to mind the, the kings of Ur we called Nagast. The tax collector was called Nagashi. This similarity between the Naga of Funan, and the Nagast of Urwi, is so striking that it suggests the possibility the Urwi and slash or Aksumite colonist may have been early established along the waterways of Southeast Asia. The cities of Funan were laid out along the canals with boats used for transportation. The houses of Funan were built on piles, and were reported to be very splendid. The greatest Indo-Chinese civilization was Khmer blacks who ruled over Angkor Wat for 600 years. The Khmer received much from the Hindus especially the Hinduized, Naga and Dravidian, kings of Java who helped them exploit the fertile soil of the Mekong. The Khmers were a diverse people. Although many Khmer were Austroasiatic speakers, other people spoke Geez and Tamil. Sanskrit was used by the Khmer as a lingua franca. They wrote in the Devanagari script which was invented by the Nagas or Ethiopians. Some Khmer practiced human sacrifice and a form of spirit worship as in Ethiopia. Their houses were built on wooded stilts and thatched with leaves. They were already agriculturalists, and there is evidence they worked with metals. Due to Dravidian and Naga influences the Khmers began to develop their material culture. Their bronze work was superior to any work done in the rest of Indochina and they made beautiful carvings in bricks. They were highly literate and honored their poets. The architecture of Angkor Wat, 
and other Khmer centers was typified by a series of compressed stories that formed the tower of each shrine, composing a series of several arched raves, which take on the outline of a sprouting shoot. The second major characteristic of Khmer architecture are luxuriant, extremely fine foliate scroll relief carvings. In association with the great monuments are magnificent sculptures. Many people think of the ancient Khmer as warriors, but they were mainly farmers. They used irrigation to grow rice. Dikes were used to move water along the canals or keep water in the reservoir to make sure it was available when needed. The women of Khmer held high status in Khmer society. Many women such as Indra Devi and Takala, were acknowledged fine scholars. The Khmers were very dark people with burnished skin nearly black. The hair was kinky, the same as that of Dravidians, Elamites, and Minoans. The Khmer civilization was destroyed by advancing Chinese races mainly Thais, while the Funan culture was destroyed by the Annamites or Vietnamese. Most of these groups still show affinities to